Alright, are, are we rolling? Okay. Alright, so we are All right, are, are we rolling? Okay. Alright, so we are going to play the GPA game. So what this is, uh, is we're gonna have nine volunteers come up and you are going to be the college applicants. Everybody else that's sitting down, we are going to be the um, admissions advisors. And then we are going to have one person read some things and they are the director of admissions. So I'm actually gonna need 10 volunteers. So I need nine people to come up to the front of the room. So we have Alex, Ben, uh, Simon, or, uh, I'm sorry, Anika, Isabel, one, two, three, four, five. So I need, I think, four. I'm gonna hand these out. And you guys, I would like you to put yourselves in order from highest to lowest in GPA, please. So only show this side of your card to the students, to the, the admissions people. All right, I need four more volunteers, please. A director of admissions. Yes, you can come up. Who else? Do we have Sarah. Is that Sarah? It's hard to tell. It's hard. Okay, so here's yours. Roman, you can come up, CJ, and Kevin. Is that enough? Uh, uh oh, I have one extra. So that one of you can be the director of admissions if you'd like. Do you want to be the director? All you have to do is wait. You don't have to do the director. Is that good? Sorry, I'm sorry, I just counted. Okay, you want to be the director? All I need you to do is read this part. You don't have to read this. So I just need you to read each one of these things. And I'll kind of tell you as we go. I'll stand back there with you. Do you want to do this part? Okay. So maybe just go kind of over that way, maybe. Oh, over there. Hello? Okay. All right. So maybe kind of spread out a little bit so you're not so close together. Scoot down. Social distance. Yeah, let's try to spread out as much as we can. Okay. So we are in order, correct? Does that look great to everybody out here? Where's the admissions people at the college? All right. So if we were only, except we are a college and we are looking at nine applicants. You guys are pretty similar with what you bring to the table. So we have to look at your personal qualifications um, and qualities. So that's what we're going to base admissions on. If we were only basing admissions off of academics, the top three GPA students would be admitted. But we are going to look, we're a selective college. We want a well-rounded um, college community and atmosphere. So we're gonna look at some other things rather than just academics. Okay, so director of admissions. Do you wanna come back here maybe a little bit? You can stand just here and then go ahead and read for us number one. Number one, you just want to read that. So, if you have taken an exceptionally strong academic program, you're going to move two spaces forward. So, if the back of your card says that you've taken an exceptionally strong academic program, who Does says that? that? Read the back of your explicitly say that. What? It has to say you've taken an exceptionally strong academic program. It explicitly states it. Okay, so you want to move two spaces up. So you want to actually move this way. So you two are going to scoot down too. And you're going to get correct. Perfect. All right. So number two. Oh, let me let me preface this. So, what would an exceptionally strong academic program be? Does anybody have any ideas about what that would be, Jonathan? What is it? AP. Yes. So maybe taking all the AP classes that it is possible to take at your high school. Um, what is something else that would be an example of that? Um, Eva? Yes. Uh, that would be, that actually is going to fall under something else, but that's a really good thing. Yes, Kevin? What is it? NHS. Maybe if you're involved in NHS, that might fall under extracurriculars. Um, one that I'm thinking of is if you've taken maybe more than two years of the same language. So that might be considered something. Um, okay, so let's move on to number two. If you play the oboe or viola, 
go forward one space. Move up. Oh, wait. <laughs> Apparently someone okay. does. Okay. All right, so colleges and universities, they have special spots to fill. So that may be with athletics, or it may be something that not everybody does, like the oboe. Not everybody plays athletics, but even play the oboe or the old viola is even more, you know, something that not everyone does. Okay, so let's move on to number three. If you clearly stated that this college was your first choice by making an early decision, application, and commitment, go to that one. Move up to the spaces. It's not fair. Okay, does anybody know what early decision means? If you apply to a college, early decision. Jonathan? Uh, if, for example, on the PSAP, had you say, well, your first pick for college would be to go to school, you know, what that be? Well, early decision is actually how you apply to college. That is a really good guess. Taya? Yeah, there's usually two application deadlines. One's the early decision and one's the regular decision. Yeah, there's early decision, there's early action, there's regular decision, there's rolling admission, there's all kinds. Kevin, do you know what early decision is? I think it's when you decide that you can get into the college you're going. Yes, yeah, so early decision is a binding commitment. So if you apply early decision to a college, you really have to research all of the colleges that you're interested in, and that has to be your top choice. It's pretty much like getting married, because if you apply early decision and you get in, you have to go there. You have to withdraw all your applications to any other colleges that you've applied to. Even if they end up sending you better financial offers, you're, you're legally you have to go there. You're fine. That it's a legal binding agreement. So early decision is you really, really have to be sure. Okay. So um, early action. That means that you are applying early. You're interested in it. You're going to get an earlier decision than if you apply regular decision. Okay. So let's move on to number four. If your intended major is psychology or pre-med, go back one. Okay, so psychology or pre-med, you want to go down one. Okay, so applying with the intended major of psychology or pre-med is not necessarily a detrimental thing, but it is common. So if it's a highly selective college and maybe they're looking for just something that's more well-rounded, maybe they already have a lot of students that are probably applying with psychology or pre-med, so they're looking for students who are applying to other majors and interests. Okay, next, number five. If your intended major is Greek, go two spaces up. Good. <laughs> okay. All right, so the classics may not be as popular at colleges than, than, than they once were. So, um, now, these are kind of all just generalities that we're talking about. So this isn't set in stone what every college is going to do. It's just intended to show you what some colleges look for. So... Greek may be, if you're interested in the classics, that may be really um, good for one college. It may not be for another one. So it just depends what the colleges are looking for. Okay, so number six. If you do not know any of your teachers well and have trouble finding someone to write your college recommendation, go two spaces back. <laughs> okay. So you definitely, throughout high school, it's important to form positive relationships with teachers. So... Hopefully you're all doing that. We're a small school. You should be forming those relationships so that they know enough about you to write a strong recommendation letter. And don't be afraid when you ask your recommenders to highlight things that you want them to include in your letter. That is totally acceptable to do. All right, number seven. If when you typed your college essay, you forgot to change the name of the college you were applying to, go for that way. Four down four, yep, down. Four. <laughs> Adios, charger. Okay, so when you're applying to colleges, it is a stressful time. Ask any senior right now. If you are writing your essay and you're saying how much you want to go to this college and you forget to change it in all the spots, you use the same essay for every college and you forget to change the name at some point in there, they are not going to be happy about that. So please make sure you help them. Also, you should definitely not post things on social media. Colleges check social media to see what you're doing. So make sure what you are posting is appropriate. All right, number eight. 
If you are a legacy, go to up. Okay. So many institutions give special consideration to legacy status for a variety of reasons, including the fact that loyal families often lead to financial support. So an example of why highly selective, this is, this is an example of why highly selective admission involves factors that are beyond many students' control. So this is why it's important to apply to a range of colleges in terms of selectivity. You want to apply to some that you can get in very easily, some that are target, and some that are going to be a little more challenging for you to get into. Yes, reach. Very good. All right, number nine. If you did not write the optional essay for your college application, go back one. <laughs> okay, so many colleges consider demonstrated interest in choosing students because not only do they want enthusiastic students, but this leads to a better enrollment yield from accepted students. So visiting campus, attending local information sessions, and corresponding directly with admissions offices are other ways to show your interest. So you want to contact admissions. Let them know that you're interested. Let them know that you're visiting. Okay, number 10. If the topic of your college essay was what I learned from playing sports, go back one. <laughs> okay. Good. So some college essay topics are so common that it's very difficult. Um, to really get a unique and interesting essay and learn much about the student. So you want to find something that's going to set you apart. Number 11. If you wrote the essay of the year, the one that was passed around the entire admissions office, it was because it was so remarkable. Go three, that one. Yay. Good. <laughs> it's Perfect. Perfect. All right. So that's self-explanatory. You want to set yourself apart. Number 12. If you plagiarize an AP American paper or hang out time, sit down. You are complete. You are out of the competition entirely. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> so this is a serious disciplinary issue for colleges. Um, if you are cheating in high school, they think that's going to continue on to college. So uh, make sure minor um, infractions are not that important. Cheating is, is very important, so please. Of course, no one here would do that. Do not cheat. Number 13. If you will be first in your family to attend college, go to that way. Okay. Um, Isabel, um, I, guess she's, I guess she's staying. I think you're fine to stay there. Okay. Well, let me show you out. Actually, you're, I think you're out. So if it's... Uh, Cooper, why don't Cooper, why don't you go over on the other side of Simon? Because I think Isabel is out, so that way. There we go. Okay. So colleges and universities uh, reward students who have overcome factors that make them less likely to pursue a college education. So another example is English as a second language. All right. So number fourteen. If you, if you participated in an enriching summer program between your junior and senior years, go to forward. <laughs> okay, good. Um, she care you, but no. No, <laughs> Ben is just at the top. He's at the top of the class. Um, okay, so this is where your GSP, GSA, GSE would come in. Um, if you are doing some in-depth volunteering in places, this looks really, really good to colleges. They want to see that you're involved in your community, that you're a giving person, so get involved with whatever you can. Number 15. If you have participated in no extracurricular activities, go three back. Okay. So most selected colleges are looking to build a well-balanced and interesting freshman class. They don't want everybody that's just you know, really smart that everybody would be at the library. You'd all have the same interests, and it wouldn't be an interesting class. So some large state universities, um, GPA scores and test scores alone are sometimes the only indicator who will be accepted. So it's just different when you're applying to very selective colleges. Number 16. If you have participated in a significant community service project, move up one. Okay, good. So this 
This shows colleges that you're not self-absorbed, you're doing things for others, you're involved in your community, same with the extracurricular. extracurricular. Okay, number 17. If you are an Eagle Scout, go two up. <laughs> Thanks, CJ. All right, you're up from the bottom. <laughs> So attaining the rank of Eagle Scout requires a long and consistent commitment to a goal as well as strong demonstration of leadership skills. So this is looked at that very favorable. We should have applied right. for Jacob. I'm sorry? We should have applied for Jacob. Oh, yay, Jacob. <laughs> All right, number 18. Okay, so if you are a varsity athlete, go up to. Yes, maybe everybody should be up. Maybe everybody scoot down that way a little bit, kind of spread out some. And, and if, if you are a varsity athlete and took second place at regionals in your sport, move up one more. Yeah, maybe. Good. Okay, so fielding strong teams is important to visibility, recruitment, and alumni support, among other factors. Many colleges and universities recruit athletes, not just Division I schools, but also Division Three institutions. All right, so number 19. If you got a D in an academic course at the end of your junior year, go back three. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so though no one grade makes or breaks an academic record, colleges will look at grade trends. So you have to keep your grades up all the time. Number 20. If you came to the college information session and introduced yourself to the college representative, um, you get go forward one. Yeah. Oh. And in the case of the student who just got the D, Simon, you are explaining your extenuating circumstances. So that could maybe something happened. Maybe a, a very traumatic thing happened in your life, and that's why the grades look to a D. Yes, Jonathan. So the do Ben's do for whatever he had carry over so he would still be above and eat there so. Yeah, let's do that. Add two bonus points. Yeah, it's it's no, it doesn't count. Go ahead. Yeah. Bonus points. Bonus, no bonus points. points. All right, number 21. If you are a resident of Idaho, go forward through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point of this is almost every college is seeking all sorts of diversity and given a small number of students applying from any given geographic location um it may be an advantage so maybe nobody from Idaho goes there so that's an advantage for you um another all that's there is another example of this is a woman applicant may be advantage in engineering and a male applicant maybe have has an advantage of applying to nursing school because it's typically one sex over the other. All right, number 22. If you never gave your counselor any personal information for, for use in writing your college recommendation, go back one. Adios, muchacho. Okay, this is obviously very important to me. Please help me to write your letter. Um, I've gotten to know you now for a couple of years, and by the time you're a senior, I'll have to know you for two full cool years. But there are things I don't know about you still. Um, so when I give you your senior questionnaire, do a really good job. Take the time to fill it out. Write all of your accomplishments and things that you want included and want colleges to know about you. All right, number 23. If your last name is on the college library and it's not a coincidence, move all the way to the front and stay there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. So that is the end. <laughs> That is very important. <laughs> so the purpose of this is to demonstrate in a humorous way that there are simply factors over which that you have no control in highly selective colleges. Yeah, nothing to do. Um, so it's important not to become overly emotionally invested in admissions decisions. Um, and the good news is there's hundreds of wonderful colleges and universities at which any one student can achieve, grow, and thrive. So that's the most important message here, is you never know. So who's at our top now? What are our GPAs? Hold them up so I can read them. So 3.2 is the highest now, and then 3.6, and then 3.5. Where's our 4.0? Okay, so you're all the way down. She's from Idaho. Six. Oh. 
and you're from Idaho. And then we have three point uh, seven. Simon, what's yours? Three point three. Three point three. Okay. So that's just one example of how the admissions process could go. That's why it's important.